reality is coming that indeed we're finding there's a lot of therapeutic value. We're going to talk a little bit about that and some other things, but I'd like the panel to introduce itself. We're going to start with Peter at the far end. I'm Peter Hendricks, I'm a psychologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Hi, my name is Don Latson. I'm an author and a journalist and author of several books about psychedelic therapy and history of psychedelic research, including the Harvard Psychedelic Club and a new book titled Changing Our Minds, Psychedelic Sacraments and the New Psychotherapy. And I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Hello, my name is Oliver Quintanilla. I'm originally from Mexico. I've been living in California for the last 20 years. I made a movie called Little Saints. I, uh, we filmed in Walter de Jimenez, Oaxaca, with a curandera down there. And uh, we're going to be showing the movie tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm um, Gary Linkoff, and I'm a visitor from another planet. Yeah! <laughs> That's true! That's true! A brother from another planet. Well, I guess you know me mostly. I've lived in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm an ethnopharmacologist. I've devoted my life to sacred medicine plants. You're here. Right. All right, here I am. Right. We're very interested in what they have to say. Let's start with the past, since uh, we, we're going to go from this end, and we have two of the uh, elders here in the Ronald Denison area. So why don't you guys start talking a little bit about psilocybin in the past? <laughs> okay, 1981, the first year of the Telluride Mushroom Festival. It's an evening program. Dennis McKenna is speaking. We had had a traditional mushroom foray up to that point. We collected mushrooms, we identified them, we ate them. Dennis gets up to speak. You have to understand, mushrooms not only came from outer space, but they landed on the dung of white zebu cattle in Northern Thailand. <laughs> Telluride has never been the same since. I don't recall exactly that that was what I said. But, you know, it was a long time ago, and uh, you know, we make up the past anyway, but yeah, the past of psilocybin uh, goes uh, way much, fur back much further than the 20th century or even the centuries of uh, traditional use in, in Central America. In fact, one of my preoccupations and, you know, for an idle speculation is just how ancient is the use of these psychotropic mushrooms because in many ways they're the perfect one for catalyzing the rise in consciousness of, of the curious monkeys which is what we are, because they require no technology to prepare them. All you have to have is the curiosity to bend over and pick it up and consume it. And that could have happened any time in the last two million years. But nobody knows when it happened. But I would like to think it happened a long, long time ago. The Dennis, we can't let you off that easy. Uh, <laughs> when we're talking about the past of psilocybin in America, uh, your little pamphlet with Terence was, was seminal. Tell us a little bit. How'd that come about? Oh, well, it's, uh, I can give the long or the short of it. The short of it is that, you know, we had gone to uh, uh, Colombia in 1981, in 1971, in search of a more an exotic and um, Toto hallucinogen, which we thought was uh, an orally active form of DMT, it turned out it was. But when we got to La Chirera, what we found were mushrooms. They are the perfect orally active form of DMT. And they quickly set us straight on what the real mystery was, and I can't get into that, but they were the mushrooms. And among the things that they imparted to us was the imperative or the compulsion really to figure out how to grow these critters so that we could share that experience with other people and confirm that what had been happening to us in La Chirera where we were either completely nuts or we discovered a new 
territory, uh, you know, for exploration, and it turned out many, many people, once they got this technology, found similar experiences. So that was confirmation. So that was the genesis of it. And we brought the spores back, and it turned out to be fairly easy to cultivate them. So then that technology went out to the world, and if mushrooms are an invader from outer space, they uh, they did a good job because they, <laughs> they took over every basement of every nerdy eighth, eighth grader in the country. <laughs> Not a shot was fired, and now the invasion is complete. <laughs> so, so Gary, you get, as an elder, you get a second so, shot here. Okay, so just a simple comment. If you remember Terence, if you know the sound of his voice, if you know the cadence of his sentences, either I am hearing Dennis, or I am hearing Terence, or I am hearing Dennis channeling Terence. But I was like, I'm not sure that there is a difference. I'm sure you know there's a difference. I'm not, I don't sense the difference. There is no space between the two of you. Oliver, why don't you give us, what do you, what's your take on uh, psilocybin? Well, for me, the past doesn't go as, as far as some of the other people in this panel. Um, when I was in Mexico, I didn't really learn anything about mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms. I knew about Maria Sabina, but it was not really talked about. And I grew up in the north in a very conservative um, town, Catholic town. Um, I was also raised Catholic. Um, then I moved to California after college. Uh, to make a movie. I didn't know what the movie was going to be about, but I knew I was coming to work on the film industry and make a movie eventually. Um, probably after a year living in California, the year is 1999, I went for a hike in um, Santa Barbara. And we ran into some people that had mushrooms, so I took the mushrooms for the very first time in my life. Um, the night went on really, really, really fast. Um, all of a sudden was the morning, but like Peter described uh, uh, earlier, I was in awe for sure. And uh, I was very excited and uh, even though the sense was of doing something bad, something illegal, doing a drug, the sense was the opposite. The sense of awe was completely like, I can't believe this is a drug because it's not, it's not like any other drug I had done in the past uh, up until that point. And uh, my first uh, reaction was go to the Central Library in Los Angeles. And uh, I would go every day to read books, and that's how I found out about Gordon Watson. And I say that if he was able to go in the 1950s, all, all the way down there, with no roads and everything, and probably not speaking Spanish, I'm sure I can go myself right now. So two weeks later, I went down there. And I met a beautiful woman, an older uh, elder shaman, and uh, I consider her my mother now. And uh, I've gone through many experiences with her uh, over the years, since 1999 till, till a year ago, it was last summer when I went for the last time. Um, well, that was my experience in the past, you know, like um, I, I understood why I was in California, I understood why I left my family and my friends, and most importantly, I found out the movie I was going to make. So once I was down there and I told this uh, Natalia, I told her I want to make a movie about this subject, I want to make a movie with you. She immediately said, no, no cameras. So it took five years of many visits, um, sometimes two times, three times, four times a year. And uh, finally, uh, it, it got to a point where she said, okay, we're gonna do it. A year later, I came back with a group of people the year is 2006. We filmed there. And shortly after, there was an article that came on the news, um, and it said uh, scientists look at new uh, the magic mushrooms. It was the very first article that I remember about psychedelics coming coming out, and I was like, oh my god, I don't know who these scientists are, uh, but they are correct on what they're saying. <laughs> they're certainly correct. And uh, that was how I uh, got into it, and uh, it's been a wonderful, uh, life-changing experience for me, certainly. And uh, I, every time I have a chance to talk to anybody, I, I, I do, I do because I think it's important. I think uh, 
It makes us better human beings. Thank you, Oliver. Please. So Don, uh, coming from San Francisco, we're, we're, we're both natives, I think. Um, I'm native from New York, but I've lived in San Francisco oh, okay. since I was 18. Yeah, so you've, you've seen the psychedelic kind of experience all through San Francisco. What did psilocybin mean in the city? Yeah, well, you know, I, I got, as I mentioned last, last night, I got into this in the mid-70s when I went down to Palenque and, and had the mushroom experience down there. And when I came back, and I found, what year was your book published, Dennis, the psilocybin room? I think 75. Yeah, so it must have just been out when I got back. And I was um, you know, just blown away by the experience down there. And, but I never, I, I looked at the book and it just seemed too complicated for me. <laughs> so I sterilized, you know, yeah. jars and so on. But I kept the book for decades and decades. And, and you know, then I, you know, in this late, from the late 60s into the 80s, 70s and 80s, you know, I didn't, I didn't do a lot of mushrooms, maybe once every few years. And it was always fun. It was just a way to have fun. And it wasn't really, it was spiritual, it was sort of an ego mystical sense, you know, it really got an appreciation for the symmetry of nature and, and a whole other way of understanding that. But, you know, it really wasn't, uh, you know, I did the woods or on the beach, but it really wasn't uh, until I started working on this book, Changing Our Minds, and started interviewing people about the therapeutic uses of psilocybin that I started to understand the difference, you know, between recreational use and nothing wrong with recreational use but and, and, and the therapeutic use and I told this story last night so I won't tell it in any detail but you know after interviewing some of the research subjects in the, the clinical trials that are being done with by Hefter mostly by the Hefter Research Institute which Dennis talked about you know and just these amazing stories of people healing with their depression and their addiction cancer patients um, uh, I decided to try to I couldn't be a, a, a research subject, I couldn't get a, even an official, you know, a volunteer, but I tried to recreate that experience with an underground mushroom therapist and really try to work on some of the issues myself. And as I told the story last night, you know, I have some friends that died and I had a really powerful grieving experience. And, I, and it was a very healing experience. It wasn't really what I was expecting, you know, because I think of mushrooms as fun. And this was a very difficult experience, but but it was really healing in terms of looking at not just these friends of mine who died recently, but um, you know my, my parents and just my whole life. And it was a very powerful experience. I end the book with that. And I kind of got us, I was trying to get a sense of the different kind of intention of recreational versus therapeutic. And so I tried to talk about that in, in, in the book. Peter. Who was the question? <laughs> Let me see. Oh, the past. So we're talking about what was psilocybin in the past in the scientific community? Well, um, actually speaking of the past, going way back. Yeah. So when we talk about a, a drug being used off-label, the idea is a drug is being used for some purpose other than originally intended, but we might have an idea that could be helpful. And I have the sense that our, our brains in this modern era are, are being used off-label all the time. In other words, we, we've, we've evolved for a specific environment, and, and the, the environment we're in now does not look much like that original environment. And I think um, one of the, perhaps one of the secrets to recapturing our health is to look to the past and how our ancestors lived. And that could apply to not just the food we eat. Obviously, we have a problem with um, calorie-dense food that has very poor nutrients, but also our physical activity. But of course, I think we also need to look to what would probably be the mental health tools or medications at the time. And I think there's solid evidence that the psilocybin and, and similar compounds were the preferred mental health tools of our ancestors. And I think if we're going to not only improve our mental health, but um, as I stated in my talk, sort of improve the, the human condition, we need to look to the past and, and you know, find <clears throat> wisdom in those approaches. You know, for me, uh, mushrooms in the past is kind of a, an interesting thought. I started out as a Roman Catholic seminarian uh, being trained in religion, Ligere meaning to tie and read back. So I was really a proponent or a, a priest going to be in a, in a, in a relationship of uh, imparting the past on the present. Um, and, and when I 
went through a bunch of changes and ended up in the summer of love in the city of my birth. Uh, it, it was magical. I suddenly had a delayed adolescence from boarding school, all male, to uh, this incredible open society. And uh, psilocybin was a really powerful influence, along with LSD and MDMA and a lot of these other theogenic substances, which is, I, forgive me, Dennis, I'm still uh, tied to that uh, kind of deatory kind of energy. I still feel there's some I, you know, deity there, whether it's us or the web or the multiverse that we're in or the sum of all the multiverses, whatever it is or isn't. And so for me, the diving into that new world, being transformed, doing the awe that Peter talked about and that Gary always exemplifies for us here at the Mushroom Festival, uh, an awe that, that draws great humor in the world, right? For me, this was a very important part of becoming a professional person. And I went on to become editor of the paper here, going on to politics, going on to actually a national association leadership as a Green Party member on the national level. And I attribute that to psilocybin. I attribute that to the theogenic opening of my world that gave me the bigger picture. So that's kind of the past in, in my view.